Hello, this is Yarrow, and welcome to the Entrepreneur's Journey podcast. Today's guest is Morgan Brown, who started a blog about mortgages and grew it to a $6,000 per month income stream, all while working a full time job. Let the journey begin. Hello, this is Yarrow, online entrepreneur, podcaster, and writer of the Entrepreneur's Journey blog. Thank you so much for downloading this episode of the EJ Podcast, where I interview Morgan Brown. Now, Morgan came to my attention after he sent me an email originally asking if I'd like to try out his service, Qualaroo, the company he currently works for. In that email, he mentioned he was one of my very first blog mastermind members, a student of my coaching program that teaches people how to make money from a blog. Now, Morgan did something very, very special with my program. He actually implemented it. He implemented it all the way through to the point that he was making $6,000 per month from this blog that he started as a side project. So in this interview, you're going to hear the whole story from how Morgan started the blog while working his job to how he brought on writers to expand it even further, how he got traffic, how he created content, how he made money, and then how he actually eventually sold the blog because it helped him to land his dream job. Now, before I press play on this interview, if you're interested in taking part in the next run through of my blog mastermind program, which may or may not be coming up depending on when you're listening to this interview, either way, if you're interested in finding out when it's coming up or even if it's on right now, you can go to www.blogmastermind.com, enter your name and email into the box you find there, and you'll be notified exactly when the program is running or you might find it available ready to go right now. Okay, let's dive straight into the interview now. Here comes Morgan Brown. Hello, this is Yaros Dark, and welcome to an Entrepreneur's Journey interview. Today on the line with me, I have a gentleman named Morgan Brown who popped up via my email, uh, initially querying whether I'd be interested in talking about a service that he's working for called uh, Qualaroo which he's currently working on. And through our email discussions, I discovered that Morgan actually had a blog and he read my Blog Profits Blueprint ebook when it first came out. And that led to him joining my Blog Mastermind training program. And he's, he's nodding his head to agree that all these things are true, so that's good. And he then went and applied uh, pretty much everything uh, that I taught and created a blog, and I'll just quote some numbers here, that ended up getting 1 million visitors a year and he was making about $4,000 a month in affiliate income and had about five writers during the, the peak of the site and then sold it all uh, in a couple of years later. So I grabbed Morgan to tell this story from start to finish. So Morgan, thank you for uh, joining me. Thanks for having me, Yara. It's great to talk with you. Okay, so uh, I'd love to hear more about this blog, but but first, uh, you know, has this been like an internet career for you? Was the blog just one one of many projects you had? Like, where did it all begin? Sure. So uh, my background has always been in the online marketing space and startup space, and so um, it for a variety of different startups. And when I came across the Blog Profits Blueprint ebook. It really struck me uh, that there was something that I could do and, and take advantage of, and, and it really was a blueprint uh, for how to go about doing it and, and executing a blog marketing strategy. And so when I read it, I had already been blogging uh, kind of on the side. I was sharing my thoughts about the mortgage and finance industry, which I was working in at the time. And so when I uh, read uh, your ebook, it really just occurred to me that I could really uh, make something of my blog and, and really make it a traffic and revenue and, and lead generator uh, as well. Were you working a job before this? Like, what, what was your career? Did you go to high school, university, then get into the sure. internet? Or Yeah, so I went to high school, then I went to college. In where, at, where, where are you from? Uh, so I live in California right now, Orange County, California, and um, oh, I went to school. Yeah, I went to school in Santa Barbara, California at uh, UC Santa Barbara, okay. and um, I graduated at the height of the dot-com bubble in the late uh, 90s and joined an internet startup in Los Angeles, uh, spent a year living overseas in Frankfurt, launching the German version of their product, uh, and that's really where I learned cool. a lot of the online marketing skills that I've 
been practicing ever what, since. What was that company? That was called SalesMountain.com, and it is uh, no longer around, unfortunately, but uh, picked up a lot of great marketing lessons and really uh, cemented my career in kind of the internet slash startup space. Uh, what Did you have a, a sort of specialty? Like, what were you hired to do? I was hired to run operations. I was fresh out of college at that point, but I quickly moved into uh, product marketing and affiliate marketing, so working uh, to drive traffic to the uh, to the site and also market the uh, the product uh, okay. in various ways. So, all right. So you're in Germany, and did did you get fired or did you quit? What what, what happened next? Sure. So they uh, the the uh, founders called me and said, uh, and we also had an office in Cambridge, London at the time, and they said, uh, we have two weeks. Uh, try to uh, get the best price you can for every piece of furniture and computer in the office. <laughs> And then fly to Cambridge and do the same thing and then use uh, whatever proceeds were to fly home and then give us the rest. So, wow, uh, that was it was quite the uh, journey, quite the adventure. <laughs> wow. Oh, those yeah. are the times, though, weren't they? Exactly. Yeah. So. Fire sale. Right. Okay. Um, well, then you must be thinking next, what do I do? Because you were, you know, out of a failed startup. Um, right. Not your fault or in, or in any sense of the, the, that, but. You're kind of starting from scratch a little bit, right? Yeah. So, what so then do? I went to so then I went to a uh, digital marketing agency, and where I was building websites for the agency for uh, big brands. Um, so brands like Sunkiss.com built their website. This is in about 2000. Um, did online marketing campaigns for various movies and um, email marketing, pay per click, some SEO. Uh, that type of thing, all for the client side. And this was um, from 2001 to 2004. Um, and so really starting to understand all these different pieces and, and how they work together. But in the background, blogging was starting to really gain traction. And I was pretty much oblivious to it because I was uh, heads down with all this client work. So it really wasn't until about 2005 when um, it really got on my radar and then mm. um, that's kind of when I picked up an interest in it. And you must have been around your mid-twenties then or maybe yeah. the early twenties? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Kind so of it sounds like you weren't an entrepreneur for a lot of that early career, uh, but you were around entrepreneurs. Did you have a great desire to become you know, your own boss sort of thing or have you always kind of liked a bit of a mix? Uh, I love startups and so I kind of, uh, I love making new ideas uh, happen, bringing them to life and seeing uh, people adopt them and, and resonate uh, with them and, and watching them grow. So that's really what excites me. And so whether it's someone else's idea that I think is really excellent or uh, my idea um, and whatever the case may be, that's really what's exciting to me. Okay. So tell us the, the blog. Did you then start researching blogging? Like, How did blogging come into your world? Sure. So I think blogging came into my world um, because uh, so after the agency, I went to a mortgage company, which was started by my friends, and they had hired me to generate leads for their business. Um, so in the mid 2000s here, uh, the mortgage industry was very hot, um, lots going on, and they needed someone to come in who knew online marketing and could uh, acquire leads and users at, at uh at a reasonable price. So I came in and started doing that. And while I was in the space, I, uh, two things happened. First, I found out about blogging through a book called uh, Blogging for Real Estate by a gentleman named Paul Cheney. And um, one of my friends uh, was reading it, that type of thing. And there were some social media circles starting to pop up in that niche. Um, and they were kind of happening around me. And so um, as soon as I found out about blogging, I realized I was totally behind the eight ball because here I had been in the digital marketing space the whole time, but uh, this the whole kind of social blog, Clue Train Manifesto movement had popped up all around me, and I felt like I had my blinders torn off, and so I immediately went to just kind of devouring everything I could get my hands on about blogging. So that was one part of it. And then the second part of it is that I really became became a bit dis, uh, disenchanted with the, the mortgage industry. There were a lot of things 
um, a lot of greed and a lot of things happening in the space that I didn't particularly love. And so learning about blogging and, and having a platform that I could actually publish my thoughts on and that type of thing is, is really how it, how it started. It was just very organic as a, I started my own personal blog and then found quickly that I had a passion for writing about the ways that I thought the industry that I was working in could be better and how consumers could be better protected about uh, when they go about financing uh, their house and that type of thing. And so it really evolved kind of organically from there. Mm, okay. So did like, it sounds like you know your background was lead generation and you were probably quite familiar with paid traffic methods. So your pay-per-click and you're buying banner ads maybe or, or – you know, yep. media buying, those sort of things, but not so much this, like you said, the Clue Train Manifesto, which was all about building community and getting social and, and building free organic traffic, which blogging was probably the, you know, the foundational pillar for that movement, I'd say, and then it's spawned Facebook and every other social media tool since then. Um, exactly. Did you, like, I know when I started blogging, I wasn't even sure what the difference between a blog and a website was. You know, it was kind of like, it looks like a website. How does this thing act as a blog and, and make it different? Did you get that to begin with, or did you sort of have to start blogging yourself and, you know, install WordPress, or maybe you installed, I don't know, movable type or use Blogger back then, whatever it was, and then learn through that experience? Yeah, so I definitely didn't have a great concept of the the power of it at first. Um, I started just with a uh, movable type blog and then uh, quickly learned about WordPress. Um, when I get my mind into something, I, I tend to obsess over it. I, I want to learn as much about it as fast as I can. So uh, as soon as I saw the blogging book, then I read the who Trained Manifesto, and I read the book by Scoble and Shell Israel, and I found Entrepreneur's Journey. And uh, so I really tried to immerse myself into the space. I learned about WordPress and um, then went on to set up my own WordPress blog. But it was very kind of an organic type of thing. And uh, I remember a lot of people around me in my space, my family, that type of thing, didn't quite understand what it was either. So I would say, oh, I wrote this article on, on my site, you know, and if I said blog, they were totally baffled. So it was, it was definitely something very new uh, for me. And like you said, uh, I was very much familiar with paid and kind of traditional digital marketing. And when I saw this, I was, you know, kind of fascinated. Um, and it wasn't until I read the Blog Profits Blueprint book where I started to understand the the implications of driving traffic, monetizing it, that type of thing. And then I was really excited mm. you know let me uh toot my own horn here you can make my head really yeah. big um you when you read the blog profits blueprint my report what was the the big aha or is there something you can remember that stood out not even necessarily a technique but what changed your, your way of thinking yeah i think um it was the system it was an approach to to really looking at what i was doing uh holistically and as an enterprise and as a an opportunity to uh, really go beyond just a place where I could uh, riff or just jot down some thoughts, but to a place where I could really build a publishing platform that could earn earn money, drive leads, uh, build my reputation, um, all sorts of things. So it was really the holistic kind of approach that you laid out that really resonated. So um, it made, you made you see a blog as a serious business as opposed to a, a hobby almost. And exactly. And you know, a system behind that. Okay, well, that's interesting. It's funny because when I wrote it, you know, I'm not thinking that necessarily is what people are going to take away. So that's why I like hearing yeah. that from you. So take us forward. Now, your domain name, you registered blownmortgage.com. Is right. that like, is that the, the <laughs> why? <laughs> sure. So um, it actually... Like most things with the early start of my blog, it was all kind of organic, but um, some of the people in my office, when they were trying to help people buy new homes or finance, they would say that their credit was blown, uh, b meaning that their credit was bad. They couldn't qualify for, for a home loan. And so that word was just kind of floating around uh, out there. Um, and obviously, I was in the mortgage space. And so... And I was actually dissatisfied, uh, like I said, with the state of the industry and some of the practices that I saw going on. So 
loan mortgage just seemed to make a lot of sense uh, for me as a way to talk about the challenges um, that people face when dealing with mortgage and finance in ways that um, uh, they can they can you know use the system to their advantage as opposed to you know falling victim to some of the unscrupulous folks that were were in the space. Did you have a grand plan with this? Like, was this something you're thinking side project? I'm going to keep my full time job and play with this on the side, or no, this is going to be my my new source of income. I'm going to quit my job and focus on this blog. No, it was it was totally organic, and and it was really a place for me to get some of the frustrations uh, that I encountered in my day to day uh, out, and right. you know, kind of a stress reliever. But <laughs> once I once I um, read some of the, the tips and tactics that you had uh, in Blog Profits Blueprint, and I saw some results. I remember the first time that uh, I was, one of my posts was excerpted and featured on another popular real estate blog, and something like 35 or 45 or 50 people came and visited my site when before it was just my mom and my brother uh, doing me the favor of, of clicking over from an email I'd send. Uh, that's when I, it kind of dawned on me that, oh, wow, maybe I have something to say. Uh, maybe this can be uh, something more than, than just a repository for my thoughts. Okay, so that sounds like the turning point where you're thinking, this this is serious now. Did you have a plan at that stage, or were you still kind of like, let's just keep seeing where this goes? It was it was definitely let's let's keep seeing where this goes. I think um, I started to think about it as a way um, that I could generate business for the business that I was working at. Um, I still hadn't gotten to the point where I thought that this could be a revenue uh, generator and income for me personally. Weren't you ranting um, about the bad things in your industry? How is that going to be good for the business you're working for? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, so what's funny is um, you're totally right. It's a bit counterintuitive. But what I found was that um, people, and this is kind of down the line, but people would read what I wrote and they would write me and say, finally, someone's being honest about what's going on. We want to work with someone who's mm. honest. Um, counterintuitive people, marketing. Yeah, the people in my industry uh, did not care for me very much. But, uh... <laughs> no, that's a great point because I've actually heard a lot around the concept of counterintuitive marketing. And if you are saying or doing the exact opposite of what's the stock standard way of doing things, it's a great way to, to get attention and be a thought leader, uh, as, as long as you actually believe what you're saying, of course, which you obviously did. Right. Yeah, and that was totally – that was uh, exactly – um, what I figured out is that um, by taking a contrarian point of view in that space, it was very refreshing uh, to people in the industry who either agreed with me and um, didn't have the platform or the opportunity or the desire to really speak up, but wanted to be on that side of the game. And also for people who were trying to learn about the industry, uh, who were tired of a lot of the generic marketing that was out there around it. Okay, so before you, you take us forward with this, can we just get a little bit technical, a little bit how-to, and, and tell me, you said it was movable type. Did you <laughs> switch to WordPress, or did you stay with movable type? No, I switched to, I switched to WordPress. Um, I uh, had a short dalliance with uh, TypePad, but okay. then I really learned about uh, WordPress, and that's what um, everyone seemed to be recommending. It offered a lot of I, I used the WordPress.org and, and set up my own uh, server and um, kind of uh, used the original uh, theme off of uh, WordPress and made myself a, a terribly designed little header, and uh, and away I was. Uh, and you were by yourself, obviously. Yeah, exactly, yeah. all by myself. And yeah. this was still on the side, right? You did this at night and weekends? Yep. or. Yep. Yeah, at night I would come home and uh, and write about. I would jot things down um, or just kind of uh, stub some posts in uh, my WordPress admin throughout the day. And uh, and when something would strike me, I would write it. How many posts do you think a week you published? Um, in the early days, I was uh, only doing one or two a week, but I quickly realized that more content meant more traffic, and then I was doing one every day, and then I would do one in the morning and one in the evening. Wow. And, um, yeah, that was so, a job. 
Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, so I would do it uh, first thing in the morning and, um, and also later in the evening. And luckily, I was doing well at my job, so I had a little uh, leeway right. um, for time, too. And, and how long were those posts? Uh, so they were relatively short. So um, before I really got into the mastermind program and before I learned about your concept of the pillar content, I was really writing um, shorter and also uh, news-driven type of posts. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of talk about the industry out there, and there was a lot of information coming across my desk just from working in it that I would turn into to short posts. They're all sub-750 words at that point. Uh, it wasn't until, uh, like I said, that I started learning about pillar content mm -hmm. and, and that type of thing where I started going longer. Oh, well, tell us about that. So when sure. did you decide to join Blog Mastermind and, and why? Yeah, so I, I uh, read uh, Blog Profits Blueprint and it just, it made a lot of sense and it gave me, um, my be marketing background, I'd always learned to have a strategy, have objectives, and then have tactics to kind of make that happen. And I wasn't doing any of that with my blog because it was this organic little hobby, but uh, your report and kind of aligned with my traditional view of of how to be successful online and it just kind of it it you know it struck a chord and I was like yes this is exactly what I want to do and and I see how this can be really successful it just it made a lot of sense and so some of the concepts that you had in the report um, and just really resonated and I thought it would be a great investment uh, to take the mastermind uh, course to get really in detail and and learn exactly the, the strategies and the, the things that I had to do every day to, to make it successful. Now, I launched it in 2007. Did you jump on board that first group? Do you remember? Yeah, I was in the, I was in the first group. Yeah. Oh, wow. Morgan, so. did you join any of the teleconference calls? Do you remember? Um, I don't remember if I did. I was definitely... Um, I was definitely in the forums uh, more of more as a as a lurker um, and just kind of picking up ideas, but uh, I followed along really diligently. So yeah, okay, so if you were in the first group, then I was writing the course as the first group went through, and, and sort of you know you getting a lesson a week, and yes, there were exactly tasks right. in every lesson, and so did you sort of you know learn about pillar articles? Okay, I'm going to try writing longer posts, and, and instead of covering news, I'm going to start teaching definitions and things like that. Is that what kind of happened or? Yeah, exactly. So, um, so for example, just like you said, um, you would have a lesson that said, all right, if you're having trouble generating content ideas, start a content folder and just write down ideas as they occur to you and then go back through and kind of write those. And I said, okay, let's start doing that. And then you talked about creating pillar content as just really rich, long form content that would be evergreen, that would, uh, help drive traffic uh, to, uh, to the blog over time through the search engines. And um, so I started thinking, well, in this niche, and I think in any niche, there is this evergreen content that, that has a ton of value. And so talking about how mortgages work or how interest rates work or how you uh, secure a home loan or, or how the finance market works, these are all great topics to go really, really long um, and, and create some of this foundational content. And actually, it was some pillar content that I created around loan modifications at the time uh, that actually really kind of uh, took the blog to the, to the next level by, um, you know, just a lot of great Google juice. Mm, okay. Anything else you can think of from the course that made a difference? Like, obviously, I'd love to talk about when you decide to start making money, and we can talk sure. about that next. But just before right. we do that, was there anything else you can remember besides pillar content? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you talked a lot about um, how to get distribution for your content and how to get your uh, name out there and your blog out there through things like um, interviewing other blog uh, folks in your space. And so... Um, I, that's one of the tactics that I took to heart and I went out and found uh, the highest ranking real estate blogs uh, that I could find and I used different tools like the blog rank uh, badge and that type of thing to find higher traffic sites and okay. I would send them, send them an email and ask to interview them and, um, and so I built up, uh, so I would interview them on my site and they would obviously 
post a link uh, back to the interview on their site. And so there was a bunch of tactics around the distribution, so contributed articles, interviews, um, all sorts of uh, stuff like that that uh, were was hugely helpful. Mm, so we still use today a lot of that stuff, don't we? And I'm still doing interviews. Look, we're doing one right now. So. Right, exactly. exactly. It's, great. Yeah. it's a home run tactic. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's almost like we just just do pillar content and just getting out there and you know creating more pillar content with other people being involved seems to be a good formula. Yeah. So then take us forward. You must be thinking, all right, I paid money to join a course. That's a little bit more serious as well. You know, you're giving me money, so you must be thinking differently about this whole blogging thing. Did you then think, all right, now let's start planning an income stream from this? Yeah, absolutely. And so one of the things that, that happened also right about the time um, that I signed up for the course was one of my articles was picked up by a um, large news site uh, that was specific to the real estate industry. But I remember I, I got to the office one morning and went on to my website and it was down. I couldn't resolve it. It had, you know, er error establishing database connection, you know, kind of yep. the dreaded WordPress default error. And I called the hosting company, and, and they said, uh, we're sorry, there's nothing we can do. You're way over your bandwidth. Um, you've been spiking all, all morning, and uh, you know, there's nothing we can do. We can't, it was all shared hosting. They couldn't you know, up the caps or anything like right. that. And so that was <laughs> one of those kind of nightmare uh, situations. It's kind of like being tech crunch, you know, but in the real estate yeah. uh, space. Or slash so dotted back then. Or... Slash dotted, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, being slash dotted is a better example. So, um, and uh, so that was kind of when it, when it hit me that, wow, this could drive a lot of traffic and you were putting out a framework to monetize it. And so I started thinking, okay, what are all the, you know, what are the things that, that you were talking about putting in place um, in terms of affiliate marketing and premium content and email capture and kind of a lot of the things that I had learned or been around from my career started, you know, making sense in, in what I was doing. And that's when I got serious about, you know, if, if I'm sending... Uh, 10,000 people in a day to this website, there's a huge opportunity to uh, do something mm -hmm. with that. Did you have a newsletter? I did not have a newsletter. No, I had, uh, you know, the blog digest through FeedBurner, but I, I didn't have a newsletter. Um, it, it came along much later uh, in, the, in the process. Um, what, what, what why did you ignore my advice? Morgan, I remember yeah. writing clearly saying you have to get a newsletter. It was a mistake I made waiting a year. What, what happened? Right. No, well, so I was collecting email addresses, but I wasn't creating extra content because I really felt I was I was pretty much tapped at the at the content okay. level. Um, but no, and it became really important um, once I did decide to focus on it. And uh, it actually was the thing that created a ton of value. Uh, for the blog, and it was the ability to capture email addresses in exchange for premium content uh, that I was then able to market back um, for affiliate revenue. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, take us forward. So you, you decide you're going to make some money from this, and you had a framework. Sure. So what did you do first? Sure. Uh, so what I did first is I looked at uh, kind of um, how I was creating content and um, if I was creating the right types of content, and I really looked at the analytics to see what content drove traffic and what types of content drove the big kind of spikes and what content was uh, generating um, referrals from search engines and that type of thing. And I really went about planning out a editorial calendar. It's more of a spreadsheet, but basically uh, I was going to do a couple of news posts and then I was going to do um, an interview. And so my goal was to have one interview a week and then to write one pillar content post a week about a different topic and then fill it in with, with news. So that was the first thing was to kind of get organized around my content creation because I realized that that was Great. what was driving the traffic. So a and schedule. Then, right, exactly, a schedule, right. Um, and then I started looking at what were the different ways that I could uh, monetize the, the traffic. So um, I did the very basic stuff out of the gate, like set up for Google AdWords because I happened to be in a, or uh, AdSense because I happened to be in a very uh, rich uh, niche, uh, you know, mortgage 
uh, clicks in Google, I think sometimes go for over $30. Yeah. So, uh, but, so that wasn't a bad early strategy, but then I did things like, uh, I researched ad servers and um, set up an OpenX uh, ad server on my site. And then um, I also uh, started thinking about um, premium. So this is kind of when I started to think about um, some of the premium content that I could offer and email capture and uh, that type of thing. And then really started to look into um, related affiliate opportunities that existed in my industry. and. Um, and I was also getting a lot of inbound interest at that time, too, because uh, people had started to take notice of the content that I was creating and traffic was building. And I was showing up in these different interviews by interviewing people that, uh, that many people respected. So, mm -hmm. so you're building a yeah. brand. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I started to build a brand. Um, and uh, yeah, and the more interviews that I did and the more that I learned what articles were resonating, the more and more I was appearing in front of these people and the more you know, 8,000, 10,000 visit days I was having wow. um, from that. So Amazing. So just to clarify, this was all still done while you had a full-time job? Yes, so while did, I had a full-time job. And did you ever quit your job to do this blog or was it always a part-time thing? Yeah, so I left in um, the summer of... Uh, of 2007, and it was my main source of income for about six months before. Um, so, before I was hired on to uh, to run marketing at another startup, which was actually the the result of my my blogging. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. What, was that a mortgage broking sort of startup or a loan startup? Uh, or? Yeah, it was actually a uh, internet video startup, but the founder of the startup uh, had come from the real estate space. And what had happened was, um, speaking of building a brand, um, my blog had received uh, notoriety that I was named one of the top 25 most influential uh, bloggers for um, 2007 in the real estate space. And so that went in a bunch of publications and... Um, and actually, the gentleman who owned the publication that published the awards contacted me about running marketing for him <laughs> at his startup. So, wow. I still think someone out there has to teach a course on how to use a blog to get a job because I keep hearing stories about people who mm -hmm. you know, like totally unintentionally end up landing work because they just maintain a blog. Uh, it's, yep. you know, it's not what people think about necessarily why you blog, but um, it's a great side benefit. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, so... There's a lot of things you said before. You, you said sure. you're starting to get interest from people. Uh, you, you, you're getting a brand, notoriety. Uh, you said you put up OpenX to run your own advertising on your site. So I'm assuming by doing that, you start offering, like, give me $100 a month or $200 a month to put a banner on your site. Was that what you were doing? Yeah, exactly. So I just started running kind of flat rate monthly uh, monthly ad units and there was lots of uh, people that were interested in uh, being on my site from um, pe you know people in the industry to adjacent services and products like uh, credit scoring and, and all sorts mm, of stuff so it's a hot market okay yeah. can you tell me uh, during the peak then how much traffic were you getting per day on average you remember like unique visitors or page views sure um, on average it was probably Somewhere in like the five uh, to seven thousand unique visits. Okay, That's uh, Google Analytics reporting. Yeah, yep. yeah, Google Analytics reporting. So, um, and uh, I would have peaks at uh, ten, fifteen thousand. Um, I think my biggest day was probably around twenty thousand uniques in one day. And, and were you still writing once or twice a day? Like you, like that schedule, was that just you doing it? Because I know you, you, you did mention you hired five writers. So when did they right. come into this? Yeah, so actually they come, they come into this. Um, so I had kind of, uh, when I was taking your course, I realized that I had hit kind of a, a cap and a wall at how much that I could create. And I um, had started getting people that were in my space who were interested in writing for my blog uh, to get exposure for themselves. And so um, I remember I had to go on vacation, uh, and I was terrified about my blog. So I, I lined up uh, a week's worth of guest posts from people that I had talked to and kind of trusted, uh, and they contributed content for a week. And 
it didn't do the blog didn't do as well as when I was there kind of full in it, but it did well enough where I could go on vacation and and it survived. And um, I realized that I didn't have to do all the work uh, here. And so I looked for writers that I could hire and uh, that could create uh, the types of content that I needed. So um, whether it was covering, I had one person focused just solely on the news type posts. And I um, had one person who was focused more on the educational stuff. And and then I was able to look for opportunities um, where, uh, you know, where I could add additional monetization. So that's kind of at the point when I was able to build my, my email list out. And when I was able to go out and offer um, content to other sites that were in, in my space, and that's really what started to, to build up my uh, Google profile and, and landed me on the, the front page of Google for some, some very important terms that, uh, mm-hmm. that really supplemented that kind of uh, spiky traffic mm-hmm. with really consistent daily traffic from Google. Did you pay these writers? I did. I how did. did you figure out how much to pay them? Well, I kind of backed into how much I could afford, and uh, <laughs> and you know I paid them on a per post basis, and I gave them some some minimum, and I um, some of them were uh, more junior writers, and I paid them less, and some were more senior, and I paid them a bit more, um, but it was really like an organic uh, organic process. Ten dollars a post, five because these I'm assuming are Americans, right? And not yeah, yeah. So I had some at ten, some at twenty, uh, some at thirty. Um, and it just, yeah, it just kind of depended. And then they wrote varying amounts of, of content. But when I really got it up and running, I was really trying to have about four or five posts per day up on the site. Yeah, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So can we kind of paint the entire picture here of this yep. blog? Because you did eventually sell it. But during yes. the actual peak, you sure. had five writers and you're trying to get five pieces of content a day going out there and you had a schedule of some news content, some teaching content, interviews, uh, so various types of formats of content and you're also looking at what types of content was attracting more traffic from Google and trying to hit those things. So you did a bit of keyword research, I assume, to figure that out. Right. Um, By the way, was that with just the Google's keyword tool or did you... Yeah, just with the Google's uh, Google keyword tool, and then also I'm just paying attention to what was going on uh, in the news and what other people in the space were writing about. So in the the real estate industry, one of the things that became really important uh, were loan modifications, where people who couldn't afford their existing mortgage uh, would stay in their house with a, a modified term on the note. And um, there was a lot of confusion about what those were. And um, I'm confused and- already, so... <laughs> right, yeah, I had to do them and all that type of thing. But um, And so I realized that there were a lot of uh, people that needed to know how to do that. And uh, so it was really kind of paying attention to the trends around me and then also doing keyword research and looking at my uh, referrer logs in Google Analytics. This was before, you know, 60% of the traffic was secured search. Um, so it's a little harder nowadays. But uh, back then, most of the keywords were pretty visible. Right. And I guess you could look at the keywords of people landing at your site right. and what phrase they were looking for. And if you didn't actually have an article matching that, you could have one of your writers produce one. So exactly that, right. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what tool? that Was, was that just your analytics tool? Yeah, yeah, that was just Google Analytics and the, the, keyword, uh, the keyword tool. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and then what I did from there is uh, when I realized that loan modification was really important, I wrote a bunch of content around it. And then I did two other things that were really important. Um, one, I finally set up my email newsletter. <laughs> right. And was that I, a Weber, by the way? I wanted to ask. Did you? Yes, it was a Weber. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I, everything you had recommended had worked so far. I was going to keep going with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, uh, so I set up an AWeber form, and what I did is I created a piece of uh, content. I said the uh, it was um, the ten mistakes you can't afford to make with your loan modification, and it was a PDF of kind of the top ten gotchas that people run into in the loan modification process. And I put the AWeber form on my top performing posts around that subject, and. Um, it was really, really effective. I was getting 
um, 500 signups a month um, from from just search traffic uh, coming to that and people requesting that PDF. Wow. So it was really so not even on your blog homepage, just on the posts related to that. Topic. Just in the posts related to the topic exactly. Wow. Yeah, that's impressive. So what did you do then? Did that list have a, a follow up sequence of content and then you sold them something or? Yeah, so um, I had been approached by someone who offered a, a course, information marketing course, on how to do your own loan modification um, because many people, like I said, it was confusing. And actually, the people in the industry that I worked with every day didn't even know how to do it. Um, and so when I, I, when I was contacted by the, this gentleman, I said, well, send me the materials because I was really adamant about not um, promoting something that I didn't believe in. And so he sent me all the materials and I read them and I went over them with some people in my company who, uh, you know, we were all in the space so we could separate kind of the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. And uh, it seemed really like sound advice. So I put together a email sequence um, of, uh, I think it was six or nine emails, um, but that uh, kind of walked through different ways to handle the situation that these people were likely in if they were interested in loan modification and, um, and then offered this information product for them uh, through it. Okay. And in terms of making money, what was, did it turn out to be a big seller of your overall income or? Yeah, absolutely. It, that single product was probably sixty-five uh, percent of my my income. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, what, what was the peak income? You said four four thousand a month. Yeah, four four thousand four thousand a month from affiliates, and then another um, couple thousand at the peak uh, from ad revenue, um, okay. and then right. yeah, and then it kind of baselined. Uh, I could count on about four thousand dollars a month um, consistently. Okay, so a combination of selling things like a course as an affiliate, having ads being bought directly, like banners and things like that. And you said AdSense. Was, were you still using AdSense at that point, too, or was it still just direct ad buys? Uh, I was still running some AdSense. Um, I was running it through my OpenX server, yep. though, so I was serving it in remnant uh, space. Gotcha. Okay, so advertising and affiliate income made about four to six grand a month during like the good times. Yes. Awesome. So you had a business. So I can see the picture now. You've got a blog. You've got a writing team working towards a schedule. You've done some work to make sure you're hitting the right content to get the traffic from Google. You've created an email list that's targeting some spe a specific area. You went after mortgage changing. <laughs> so I'm going to call yep. it that. <laughs> and then you had a product being sold after that newsletter at the end. And that, that was the business. So the only thing I think people who might be listening to this where they really struggle. Do you have to grab something? Are you right? Oh, I'm, I'm going to plug in real quick. Okay. okay. <laughs> Before we run out of power, no problem. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the people listening, you can't see this, but I can actually see Morgan on video right now, and he's walking through his where he is. So uh, <laughs> we're running out of power. Yeah, so the only thing, Morgan, that I, I'm pretty sure everyone listening to this, they're, 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 I can understand that concept. It's obviously what I teach and what a lot of other people teach. It's start a blog, get a bunch of traffic, and then start making money from advertising and affiliate income, and maybe even eventually doing your own products. The hard part is almost always traffic generation. Right. Uh, so it sounds to me like you haven't really said anything that you did beyond just interviews and you know going after keywords and creating a really good piece of content on a regular basis and working to a schedule, but you... You never kind of like, uh, they, they, it just worked, right? <laughs> like you yeah. have to... And I think there were probably t a couple of other things that I did um, that were were helpful with driving traffic. So um, one, like I mentioned, that the interviews were really important, um, but I used each interview to get, quote unquote, a, a bigger interview. So I actually would interview a blogger that was slightly bigger than me, and then find a bigger blogger and email them that I had interviewed these people um, and then uh, use that to kind of, I actually ended up um, interviewing people at CNBC um, who would then share the interview. And so kind of working my way up the ladder with the interviews and being strategic about it was really effective. Um, the second thing that I think I did 
really well in, in retrospect is that there were a lot of people in my industry who wanted to blog or who uh, needed content, um, but they didn't have either the resources to create it or kind of the drive to create it, but they had very uh, authoritative sites. And so I would reach out to um, sites and offer to create content for them about loan modifications. And I would say, hey, I will send you a five-part series on loan modification that you can provide to your readers. And um, if you'll publish it just kind of as is and give me attribution for the content. And I had 30 or 40 people raise their hand and say, yes, send that to me. Um, now, it created a ton of extra work because I was very conscious not to publish duplicate content, but I had the opportunity to over 30 or 40 blogs to publish five posts uh, with their permission on their sites. And so I was generating 150, 200 links wow. uh, uh, that's very great. quickly. So, so what was with these sites? They were just not updating them anymore? or um, No, they were all kind of real estate agent or mortgage, mortgage sites that had uh, blogs who were um, kind of nascent and getting into uh, the business, mm -hmm. but maybe they had launched the blog off of their business website or that type of thing where they already had page rank and authority from their current business. And so you can imagine a real estate agent um, – isn't really involved in home financing, but obviously it's important to their customers. And so they would say, sure, well, I don't really know about this element of home financing, but I know it's important because I have people, my past clients and current clients asking about what the implications are. And so I would say, you know, uh, I will send you a five, five article series on it that you can run and you can uh, point people to it yeah, on your site awesome. whenever. So you did. So you were like the pioneer of super guest posting, right? Yeah, I guess so. Right. <laughs> yeah, because I mean that's what people you know love talking about today is one of the best ways to build links is, is guest posting. But you weren't just saying here's one article. You were creating a whole series for them, and it's kind of clever actually where you talk about going to real estate agents that you could sort of think about complementary industries to your own, right? And and be great. Like if you get links from raywhite.com to you slash. California or some area in California, it, it's a it's a fairly uh, you know authoritative link back as well, a very relevant link back. So I could sort of even think with me with blogging, I could go to all the other people out there writing about maybe email marketing or uh, even go to writing sites where people are learning how to write and say I'll give you a series on using a blog to do what you do and do the same thing you did. So it's right. not directly competing with them. It, it adds to their content. And yeah, that, that's a nice little tip. Oh. And yeah. it worked well. Yes. Awesome. Absolutely. Okay, Morgan, now we probably should start wrapping up this interview. I know sure. I've grabbed you till you're, as long as your battery's running out here. Right. Uh, <laughs> you sold this website. So yes. what, why? What happened? Uh, so um, I had been, uh, well, so I had started out of a, out of, out of a place where I was not thrilled with the industry that I was in. And so um, once I had been named this kind of most influential uh, blogger um, and, uh, you know, I had a lot of things had happened. I was named influential blogger. I was asked to speak at a bunch of places. I was um, quoted, you know, uh, Bloomberg News would call me regularly. Um, NPR, would their, their reporters would call me uh, regularly. Um, to try to get an understanding of, you know, the, the insight that I was, that I was sharing. And, and, uh, so when I was, um, offered a job, uh, to run marketing at this uh, internet startup company up in San Francisco, um, I was taken out of the industry pretty, pretty abruptly, uh, which was fine by me. Um, but I found that, uh, it became harder and harder to, um, stay passionate about it, being kind of disconnected from the from the space, and and frankly, I'd written about it for a couple of years at that point, and I was I was ready to, to for a new challenge, and so um, I was also going through some life changes. I had moved up to uh, San Francisco for the job and that type of thing, and so I decided that uh, you know it was time to uh, time to sell it. So time to I just didn't want it to die on the vine. Um, and I knew that I, my attention was being pulled elsewhere. And so I, I looked to, uh, to find a good home for it. So even though you had guest writers or, or regular writers, uh, that like you were still the main brand behind it. So I think 
what you're kind of saying is if you personally start writing, the site would slowly kind of die as well. So you were thinking, let's sell it. I've got a team of writers. It's still a good asset to move on to someone else. Uh, is that what your thinking was? Yeah, and, and the, the guest writers or my contributors um, had really done a great job keeping it up and, and keeping the traffic up and, and all of that type of thing. But um, I just knew that my heart wasn't in it, and I didn't want to... Um, I wanted to give it or you know sell it to someone who would would keep it going and keep it uh, keep it alive um, because I thought there was a lot left to say but it just was my time to let someone else say it so 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 how did you sell the site yeah sure so I had no idea how to sell a website um, I had never done it before and um, so I uh, I think, you know, through some, some links to interviews that I found um, in the Mastermind Forum and um, kind of following down some different trails, I got an idea of how to price my blog based on a multiple of its monthly earnings and um, kind of find a, a range for it. Um, then I, I made some bad, I made some dumb mistakes. Um, you know, I did some like I posted it uh, on some public sites where you can sell websites, and um, you know I talked to some people afterwards who said that's usually not the best idea on how to do it. Um, but I've only sold one, so I guess your mileage may vary. Um, and so I was contacted by a couple of people, and I had really put together um, from listening to the interviews and following the, the resources that I got out of the, the mastermind forums. I knew that I had to. People weren't just going to buy it based on my words. So I started pulling together all of the stats that I had about the blog. So number of email subscribers, uh, revenue by month, expenses by month, kind of profit and loss, and all my Google Analytics traffic screenshotted and um, kind of all of that type of thing to get it ready. And so when I had a couple of buyers uh, contact me, um, we would do a little... Uh, confidentiality agreement and then I would turn over uh, kind of uh, all the information and then um, found a buyer who was very interested and, and motivated to move quickly and so uh, we did a purchase contract and used uh, escrow.com and negotiated on a price and, and closed fairly rapidly. So, so all those buyers just came from you posting it on, on public sites? Yeah and I had a few people come through me because um, at that time, also, I was on Twitter and that type of thing, and I posted a, a tweet saying uh, that, uh, you know, I was going to sell the blog, and so I got some interest uh, inquiries inbound uh, just through some of that as well. Now, you told me that you made enough money on this sale to buy a car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is that where you'd like to leave the statement on the, how much um, you got? Or? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I so I so I will say that at towards the end when I was in the in the new job, my revenues had kind of tailed off a little bit and that type of thing, and and I was anxious to to sell it, so I sold it for thirty thousand um, dollars. I probably could have gotten more, and if I had sold it at its peak, I definitely could have gotten much yeah. more. But uh, I would buy it from you, I think, at that price. <laughs> to be honest. Totally. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, no, I was. It was actually at that point, I was just glad that I had had. Uh, moved it on and, and, uh, had, uh, had given it to someone else and, and all that good stuff. And I was, I was happy. Yeah, so mentally free. I think that's the, seems to be the biggest reason for a sale is just burnout and you don't want to right. be doing that. It's kind of funny. Some people just keep going. Like they, they love the, 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 like for you, the, the mortgage industry and you would have wanted to become bigger and bigger and more well-known and more well-known and become a speaker and then releasing your own products and built a whole business around it. It sounded like, right. no, you were still, more interested in technology and startups and less about mortgages and, and financing. So hence you didn't want to go down that path, but you certainly yeah. considering that you built a pretty massive platform, getting yourself interviewed on, on, you know, TV and radio and all these sorts of things as well. It's that's a, uh, it shows all you have to really do is publish content and, and start getting exposure for it. And you, you really do be, you become framed as a leading expert. So absolutely. Yeah. Totally quite, agree. Quite the journey, huh? Yeah, it was definitely it was definitely an entrepreneur's journey for sure. And uh, like I said, um, pretty much everything that you laid out in the in the course, I I did, and and it it worked really really well. Uh, that's why I got you here, Morgan. You know, I got got to have some proof that this stuff works. Right, <laughs> so, <totally. laughs> 
So what are you doing today? Like uh, you moved on from blogging to work for that startup and then... Sure. Yeah, I, I work. Um, I am a marketing consultant and I, I help companies grow now. And uh, one of the companies that I am helping is, is a company called Qualaroo. And it's, uh, it's not from Australia. Uh, we just uh, co-opted the name. And... Uh, <laughs> Right, exactly. But it's really it's a really great on-site tool for uh, gaining insights about your traffic and optimizing your content and uh, landing pages and website for conversions. So um, instead of trying to guess about how to optimize your content, you can ask your visitors and they can tell you where they're confused or where they need help. And it's, it's a really effective, neat little product. Yes, I've seen it all over the place. Little little pop up surveys that come at the bottom right corner of the screen. I'm sure the listeners have, have seen those on sites. So, uh, Qualaroo, how do you how do you spell that one? Uh, it's Q U A L A R O O dot com. Okay, now I've I've got to ask. So, uh, from all that blogging that you did and all that experience that you had, did did you? take that forward into what you're doing today with Qualaroo, or is it, do you have a completely different role nowadays to what, what you used to do? Um, no, my, so I definitely understand the power of content and uh, earned media for traffic and user acquisition, and it's an important part of my online marketing strategy that I execute uh, all over the place. So the, the ideas that work really well for blogging also work really well for building any type of business. Um, it's, the, it's the pillar content. It's the uh, earned distribution. It's the consistent day-after-day -day approach to creating it um, that, is, that is really critical. So it, it's massively important in what I do today. Mm. Okay. Okay, uh, Morgan, thank you. That, that was a great detailed breakdown, and you executed the model exactly <laughs> how Thanks, it works. So I'm pat on the back for that, and, and it worked, and you chose a great industry. Uh, maybe not necessarily other than because you happen to be in that industry, but still, that's a, that's a big cash industry, so fantastic. Um, one last question just to wrap it up. For, for those people, since you have obviously worked in, in content, online marketing, that sort of thing for a long time now. There's a lot of people who listen to these interviews who are, well, they've never ever had a website that's had much traffic and they've never generated a lot of leads. Yeah. Do you have any advice for those people who still have these doubts? Like it seems to work for everyone else, but I write lots of blog posts or, and I get interviews and no one ever links back to me and I never get these massive 10,000 visitor days like you just talked about and all that sort of stuff. Like. Uh, give us some hope. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So my blog started with no one reading it and then my family reading it and uh, and then and I didn't really have an approach. And I think the important part is having a, a strategy uh, around what you think is going to work. And, and when things really started to click was when I looked at the things that were working and that that weren't working. And I think there's a lot of opportunities out there now that didn't exist. For example, uh, when I had my blog, uh, Twitter just launched in South by Southwest in 2007. It wasn't even really a distribution platform. And now you can do all sorts of things like test post headlines as tweets before you write the content. And there's a whole bunch of different strategies that you can employ now. So I would say um, my uh, success was, one, I followed Yaro's plan. Two... I was consistent. I just did it day in and day out. And then three, I had a strategy and approach. So I looked at what was working and I tried to do more of that. And then um, I looked for opportunities to get out in front of people uh, by giving first. So by giving content, offering the guest post, um, doing interviews and promoting other people. And, and that was the, the road forward. Great. And you sound so like a normal guy, Morgan. So, you know, <laughs> you make that Thanks. sound very accessible. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, it's not uh, trying to dock with the International Space Station, but. Uh... <laughs> yep. Brain surgery. Okay, uh, do you want to mention any other websites besides Qualaroo? Uh, that, like, I know you have a personal blog. Do you want to throw anything else out there? Or? Uh, not at the moment. I mean, you can follow me on Twitter, Morgan B. 
at uh, on Twitter, but um, and that's the best place to jump off and see everything else that I'm up to. But um, that's okay. it. Morgan B on Twitter, so at Morgan B. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Morgan B, for uh, <laughs> taking the time to tell your story. I appreciate that, and I'm sure everyone listening in does as well. Uh, yeah, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Thanks, Yaro. All right. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Morgan Brown. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you would take five minutes of your time right now to leave a review, a five-star review if you enjoyed my show, and possibly write a few notes about what you enjoyed about it inside iTunes in the reviews and ratings section. So you can find the link to do that by going to my blog and then clicking the iTunes link that's associated with all my podcasts. Or if you're on your mobile phone, just go into your iTunes or your podcast app there and you'll find an area where you can leave a review while you're listening to this on the go. You can also subscribe via SoundCloud, iTunes, of course, and the raw RSS feed if you're using something like Android. All of this is available from my blog, which is at entrepreneurs-journey.com or just Google my name, which is Yaro, Y-A-R-O, and you'll find everything you need to know about the EJ podcast. One last reminder too, if you're interested in being like Morgan and starting your own profitable blog or perhaps turning a blog you've been working on right now into something profitable, you can join my blog mastermind coaching program. To find out more about when the program is next running, just go to www.blogmastermind.com and I'd love to work with you. My name is Yarrow. I'll talk to you again on the next podcast. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.